Hello folks, Mundane Man here again, and today we are going to be working on the back brakes of my 2012 Ram 1500, 5.7 liter Hemi, and I think this job pertains to probably most of the models of this truck from say 2008 up to 2017 or 2018. And the problem I'm having is the brakes aren't necessarily wore out, but the rotors have gone underground. You know, I've just, got, just about got 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles on them. So, you know, not too bad performance of the brakes, but uh, you know, I do get that brake pedal flutter when uh, braking hard or, or when they heat up. What I've purchased is similar to uh, the front of the truck. I put on some power stop. Uh, vented rotors and extreme brake pads and these are the, these are the brake pads here from power stop and I find with these brake pads very little uh, dust is created with them so my uh, fancy wheels don't get all, all dirty with uh, the residual brake dust and again I bought the uh, vented and slotted rotors and so that helps with uh, heat dissipation and you know hopefully prevent some of that warpage I'm seeing from the rotor. I do have a video of me doing front brakes and uh, so you can uh, click on that button or wherever it is that ends up on the screen if you want to see that. Let's get at it! Okay we got the back end of the truck jacked up and supported on jack stands on the axle. Got enough clearance there to take off the wheel. I like to keep the jack underneath there too just to uh, Provide some extra support. There's really not much weight on the jack, but it should one of the jack stands break for some reason. At least you got the jack there to uh, support the weight so that you can get out from underneath it in time before it crushes you. Next, we're going to try and break free these caliper bracket bolts. There are one at the top, one at the bottom, and they are, looks like a 13 16 socket might have to give it a bit of an attitude adjustment to uh, break them loose now if you live in an area that gets a lot of corrosion you can be a real chore to get out As you can see, they had uh, blue Loctite on them, which makes them a little bit harder to get out as well, but they're not in there permanent for sure. Not like using the red stuff. So that brings off the whole uh, caliper and the uh, caliper bracket all at once. So I'm just gonna prop this up back here. Try and keep it from falling. You can use wire to wire it up if you want. Next step, going to be to take off this rotor. Now because your emergency brake has shoes like the traditional drum brakes sometimes this thing can be a little tough to get out. There's a bit of drag on those brakes. So we're going to use some attitude adjustment again. I'm going to have to get a metal hammer. This uh, plastic rubber one isn't doing the trick. And try putting a little bit of WD-40 or something around the hub here because that's usually where it locks on. And some around the lug nut, or sorry, the studs. Lug nut studs, I guess. Some more hammer in here. So she's coming now, but because uh, I'm not going to reuse the rotor, I'm tapping on the actual rotor surface itself. Normally you wouldn't want to do that, especially if you're going to reuse the rotor. Well that was a bit of work. Probably not as bad as it could have been. So here are your emergency brake shoes. and. As long as they haven't been dragging, they shouldn't have wore out hardly in the least. So I usually like to take some brake clean, 
Today we're using this guy, Napa's version, but any brake clean, clean off the shoes. Uh, you got the speed sensor in there and everything. Just give it a bit of a quick cleaning to uh, keep that in good shape and, and lubricated. Brake clean evaporates pretty quick, but I like to just give everything a bit of a wipe. Now, just like traditional brake shoes, there is an adjustment adjustment wheel that uh, will tighten the shoes up against the uh, the rotor. The inside of the rotor acts like a brake drum. And there's an access point that you can get at from behind. You get your screwdriver in there or a brake adjustment tool. And you can back them off or uh, get them a little bit closer to the, uh, the face of the rotor, uh, the, the brake drum part of the rotor. And uh, that way you don't see a lot of pedal travel when you're using your emergency brake. It'll be fairly firm and right there. Now I'm just going to do a comparison of the uh, new rotor and the old one. One thing I like to do is lay the uh, new rotor over top of the old. And let's see if we can get those the lugs stud holes to line up. And it's probably hard to tell on the camera, but uh, they do line up. And I'm going to flip them over. And let's, let's check the diameter. And they look like a perfect fit. And you can see I'm working on the, uh, the driver's side. And you can see the label on there that tells you which rotor to use. And because these are new from the factory, I always like to uh, brake clean them as well. Get any uh, residual greases that may have been on them or any uh, contaminants from the time that they were shipped. I think to give the outer ring a good spray. Get that brake, the emergency brake surface nice and clean. And then take a clean cloth and just wipe it off. Doesn't look like too much came off of them, which is good. So, I always like to keep uh, brakes as grease free as possible while I'm working on them. So, I'm going to go put some gloves on while I'm handling this rotor now that I've got the backside cleaned. Okay, hopefully, we don't have to. Uh, back off the emergency brake to get this rotor to go on. Mind you, by the way, the other one came off. We might have to, so we'll see here. Nope, that went on nicely. And you can still hear there's a bit of a drag on that. On the ro or, yeah, on the rotor, on the inside of the, the drum part for the emergency brake. Is that a bit of a wash off? Now the next piece of this job will be to change out the pads. I don't know if you can see in the camera with these pads, but still a fair amount of meat left on them. But unfortunately with the uh, rotors going out around, um, I'm choosing to change out both. You don't normally want to use old pads anyways when you change or even turn a rotor. Machining rotors, I don't know, around here seems to be a thing of the past because uh, not many people have a lathe anymore to do that type of job so it's kind of hard to find somebody to do it. And the price of these things have come down so much that it's just as easy to uh, to change out the whole rotor. Plus you're not dealing with a, a bearing assembly on these or anything. It's all just the rotor itself. So what I'm going to do now is take the uh, caliper off of the caliper bracket. So you could have done this a couple of different ways. You could have taken the caliper off of the bracket first and then take the bracket off to get the rotor in place. But uh, I'm just kind of, I took the whole bracket off to get the rotor on and now I'm just going to take the caliper off this bracket so that we can uh, swap out the brake pads. So this is a number 10 socket. Now you can see in the uh, bracket, the brake pads sit in there 
and in the kit that I got it included new uh, clips and everything. You should always replace the hardware that comes with the new ones. You don't want any binding on this bracket. And I'll clean up the uh, mounting surfaces here for the bracket so that the pads will slide nice and free in there. So I'm just going to wiggle the old brake pad out of there. And the, lap, the inner and outer look to be the same. I don't see any difference on them. These feel like they could have been binding a little bit too, so um, I'm going to make sure I got some good ceramic lube in here so that these pads will slide back and forth like they're supposed to. <clears throat> and we got to take these old clips off of here. And it's always a good idea to make sure you know exactly how things go back on again. One th advantage I have of filming things, I can always go back and check the video. But it might not be a bad idea for you even to videotape yourself doing it so you can get the parts back on the way they came off. Let's see if I can get it on camera here. I'm just putting a screwdriver in behind this uh, clip. Working it off. Careful you don't bang the crap out of your thumb like I just did. Just like that. And you can kind of see in there how dirty and corroded it gets. So you can uh, use a wire brush or a wire wheel on a drill or grinder to clean up these surfaces and that way your clips will sit on there nice and firm and in the right position so that your brake pads will slide nicely in the, the grooves of the clips. Okay, so I cleaned up my surfaces on the bracket. Nice and shiny now. So we'll just put our new guides back on. Make sure they're completely pressed into place there. Same with the bottom one. They just slide right over top. And you can see the tabs point inwards. Pretty self-explanatory when you get them in there. So one thing you need to note about these clips is there's a, a long tab and a short tab. And on the inside where your clips sit in, there's also a tab that fits in a groove in this caliper bracket. So that'll uh, give you an indicator if you've got the, the, uh, the sliders on in the correct position. That tripped me up a bit, so I actually had to take one of the uh, slides off and turn it around. So just make sure they're pressed in there all the way. Now, I'm going to take some of my ceramic brake lubricant here and I'm going to paint some inside of these guides so that the pads would slide nicely on them. And again, I like to get some a little bit of lubrication inside that groove so that those uh, pads will float and slide nicely in there and won't seize up. This is essentially a high temperature anti-seize lubricant for brakes. <clears throat> so again, making sure your hands are as clean as possible. We're going to slide the brake pads in. Okay, so we got our brake pads in the bracket underneath the new, or in the new slides there. And now we're going to put the uh, bracket back on the hub and we'll make it ready for the caliper. So the caliper brackets still have a bit of a Loctite on them and they're clean. That might even be anti-seize. You can let me know in the comments. So the caliper bracket bolts need to be torqued to 120 foot-pounds. And we'll also be torquing the caliper, uh, sorry, the caliper bolts when we put those back on. And those need to be at about 22 foot-pounds. So on the caliper itself, we're going to do a couple things. Number one, we need to push the piston in. And I use a C-clamp for that that I put between the back of the caliper. And I usually use an old brake pad to uh, press that in. And we're going to clean the surface of the uh, caliper piston and these two surfaces here that uh, press against the uh, outer pad. 
I'm just going to use a wire brush in here and clean out these surfaces. Probably a drill with a wire wheel on it might be able to get at the piston a little bit better. I'm going to take some brake clean and spray it on there. Get some of the rust out of there. Okay, I'm going to stick an old brake pad in here up against the piston. Then I'll get my C clamp in here. And then just slowly crank down on the C clamp and push that piston in. You don't want to go too fast. Just want to gently retract that piston. That'll give you the extra space you need to get the uh, caliper back over your new brake pads. That should do it there. So now you can see our piston is already all the way in. I like to paint the uh, surface of the piston with some lubricant. Same with the uh, pressure points that go on the outer pad. Get a bit of lubricant on them so that they don't seize on there. You can even put some on the pad itself. And I'll put some in the middle of the back one. One of the quickest ways to wear out your brakes is have any kind of binding on them. And now we're just going to slide this back on. Okay, so we've got our caliper back on. Keeping in mind that on the driver's side, the caliper rests at the bottom of the uh, caliper bracket. On the passenger side, it'll rest on the opposite or on the top. So better view from the caliper down here. And you can see how the caliper is resting on that bracket. And that tab of the caliper is resting on the caliper bracket as well. That's how it should look when she's all done. Always good to check your brake hoses, make sure nothing's amiss there and that your speed sensor wire is still good and you don't have any leaky couplings anywhere. Now we're just going to tighten up our uh, number 10 caliper bolts and they need to be torqued to 22 foot-pounds once you've got them in. There we go, torque to factory specification, just like that. Now there shouldn't be any binding and you should still hear some drag from that emergency brake. And after all my messing around I like to give everything another little squirt of brake clean. Clean off the rotor. I don't want to create any hot spots with any grease or anything on the on the rotor. Now before putting the wheel back on I like to just give the brake pedal I don't even see in here but just a slow steady pressure to set them up again. It pushes the fluid back to the piston on the caliper and everything is nice and firm there. And there she is. Nothing left to do but put the wheel on and retorque the lug nuts at about 120 to 130 foot pounds. And this job will be done. Of course, I got the other side to do yet, but um, it's pretty much exactly the same. Well, that's my process for doing the rear brakes on my 2012 Ram 1500. Again, probably the same process from 2008 to 2018 on this version of uh, vehicle. Um, and then I also did the, see men do read instructions sometimes. I did the brake in uh, for these brakes where they want you to do five aggressive decelerations, five moderate decelerations, and then a cool down period of about five minutes. 
Um, so basically the aggressive was driving from 60 kilometers an hour down to uh, 15 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour to 10 miles an hour, however you like to uh, view that. And then the moderate is from 35 miles an hour to five miles an hour or about 55 kilometers an hour down to 10 kilometers an hour. Doing brakes is a bit more of a, a moderate challenge for a DIY person. If you're not comfortable doing brakes and let's face it, brakes are an important part of your vehicle, take it to a professional to get it done. And um, I, I'll post down below the parts that I used. Uh, this is by no means a, a sponsored video. Uh, I bought them based on reviews on Amazon for the front of the truck and the and, uh, same was with the, the rear. That's it for this edition of Mundane Man. If you like these types of videos or uh, know somebody who would like them, don't forget to like, comment, share. And uh, that's it. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.